on the tennis tour. Um, some of my colleagues, they invented it based on other people's principles. And so then we published the work because it's not anywhere in the NATA journals. So I'll post those articles for you guys. It goes step by step, but you have it in your notes as well, the step by step how to do an unload. So let's talk about the purpose of the unload is just what it says. It's to unload either a tendon or some kind of connective tissue or muscle. Okay, there's an injury to the area. All the patient can feel is the pain and they want that pain to be gone. And what the unload will do, it's so powerful, you can go from pain to no pain with just one tape job. And the athlete can still participate in their event without any discomfort. Does that mean the injury is healed? No, there's still an injury there, you're still rehabbing it. But they can still participate. <clears throat> so, what you need for the unload is your um, coverall. Now is when we really want to use the box because you have to figure out the shape that you need for whatever muscle it is you're treating or tendon that you're treating. And everybody's body is going to be different sizes. So you'll want to make sure you kind of eyeball, maybe cut a piece right off that you know you need. Or what I did was just sort of guess a, a size and then I'm going to sort of create it to her body where she needs it. So the first thing we're going to do, let's just say this is for a shin splint. First thing we're going to do is we're going to identify, well, where does it hurt, okay? So we're going to come up the shin, and she's going to be like, yeah, it's hers right there. And so I'm just going to mark it. But what you have to do is you have to decide, you have to figure out what, is the, what are the boundaries of her pain? How far does it really go out? So as you're coming up to the most severe spot, and maybe sometimes I'll have the athlete point it out and say, you show me where it hurts the worst. Once they do, I mark it. Then from there, I'm like, are we still pain here? Ooh, ooh, that still hurts. It still hurts. But now down here, yeah, not so much. Okay, not so much is what I'm looking for. I'm going to mark that so I know there's my first border. I'm going to do that above it. I'm going to do that lateral to it. And I'm going to do that medial to it. Okay, you're going to have to figure out the zone of the injury. Now, for most of us in here who are not injured, we're going to have to sort of pretend and guess. Just kind of take an area, and that's what you're going to end up taping. That is what I need my shape of my coverall. So what I want to do is make sure that I've got it bigger than that area, though. Go beyond your points. Don't just make this little petite baby box, okay? Go beyond it. So we're going to take this. I'm sort of thinking this is probably a good size for her. I'm going to clip my edges. <coughs> We do a light spray. Now, if she's in competition, I go heavy. But for the purpose of the demo, we'll just keep it light so it sticks on. You let it get tacky. If you've let it get too, if you've let it dry, you've missed your opportunity to use the QDA, and you'll have to spray again. So from here, I'm going to take my piece of coverall, and I am going to make sure that my sections that I've wardened off are in there. Okay? Perfect. So now for the shin, <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to go just beyond the tibia. So you need a little bit of tape on this side, but you need a little bit more tape on this side. So we need to make sure that we've got enough tape on there. Okay? And you'll see why in a second. Then what we have to do is we have to prepare our leuco strips. So this is the first time you'll see me do the preparation of the leuco strips like this. I'm going to take a big strip, cut it, cut it in half, stay down pulling on the table. So one is down and one is up, and then I kind of put them together. If you go both up, this thing is popping off and you just wasted all that tape. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick, I'm going to guess the size that I need for her shin bone. Now this takes practice to guess the size. The next thing I'm going to do is I need anchors for my strips. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out <clears throat> and then go in half. Now there's always going to be a frayed edge and a straight edge. I'm going to put my straight edge on the outer sections of the tape. So we've got a nice straight edge there to there. What we're going to do now is we're going to unload all the injured tissue. We're going to take our strips. We're going to put one strip attaching at the bottom. I put this thumb there to block it. I gather the tissue up. I pull and I lay down across the injured part of the tibia beyond the tibia, which is why you need to go beyond the tibia. If you just put the, the coverall on the tibia and you anchored on the tibia, you're covering the injured spot. You're just layering more tape pushing into the injured spot. So you have to go beyond it, okay? Now, this is a technique <coughs> that is only for these traction type injuries. What is happening with the, the, the um, MTSS is that it's being tractioned off of the tibia like that. We want to bring it back towards the tibia. So all of our strips should go towards the tibia. So we're going to take our next piece. We're going to create an X. I'm going to anchor, gather, pull up, and lay down across. So all my strips are going in the same direction. I keep the one strip in my hand. I overlap 50% of the strip that was going in the same direction. I hold it down, I gather, lift and pinch, and then again to the one that was going in the same direction, 50% overlap, anchor to anchor, lay down and pinch. So we're creating this basket weave effect. You see all these wrinkles? <clears throat> this is the time wrinkles are allowed <clears throat> during an unload. I'm gonna go 50% again, and now it gets much easier because the skin and the tissue is already nicely unloaded. I'm just finishing it. Do you see it? All going towards the bone. <clears throat> we need a few more. I just clip a couple extra. fifty percent over the one that was going in the same direction then fifty percent there. Does everybody see the X that's now starting to develop? The basket weave. I think maybe one more piece and we are at the top. But You see how everything pulled in the same direction. <clears throat> so now what you have to do is you got to anchor all those back down because you don't want them to pop up. So I'm going to re-measure. My sharp edge on the outside. My sharp edge on the outside. And then I'm going to close the bottom. Again, this is more of a neatness factor. <clears throat> especially if the athlete, if you're not wrapping it. That should be able to stay on if you double sprayed it with no problem, okay? And most athletes, if they get really hot or really sweaty or their event is really long, this could start to come up because they're going to move, the muscle's going to flex. You could always, and what I would do as a rule of thumb, is to wrap this. Okay, that's going to be with pre-wrap and light blast. So this will be the first time that you see a wrap. Once you know the unload and how to wrap one area, you can do any area. Okay, so this is the basic unload. If it's in the calf or the thigh, I don't need to pull all in the same direction. I want to pull in opposite directions with my unload. This is a technique that's pure to this particular injury because it's a traction injury. So we go towards the bone for all of them. Okay? Okay, good.
So if it was the calf, then you would go <clears throat> like medial lateral, then lateral medial. That's okay. exactly right. Okay. So then let's, um, you can pause.